Welcome everyone. Um, I get the pleasure of introducing various members of the La Akea community. Um, so we have um, Martin Moore. Um, so Martin grew up in suburban Pennsylvania and then moved to a uh, tiny island in the Pacific. Um, after attending a Jesuit boarding school in Micronesia, uh, he pursued college at Shamanan University and graduated in 2016 with a bachelor's in international relations. Um, he currently works as an admissions counselor for the graduate program at Shamanan University. Um, and then we also have Faith, <laughs> Thank you. Um, she was born and raised in American Samoa uh, and attended a Catholic school which was heavily influenced by both the Marianist, Marianist brothers and uh, missionary s sisters of the Society of Mary. Um, in 2007, her family moved to Hawaii uh, and then she graduated high school in 2011 and attended Chaminade University, um, graduating in 2015 with a bachelor's in historical and political studies with an emphasis on education. Um, she now uh, works at Hawaii Catholic School System as an educator and uh, catechist. And then we have Kevin, Kevin Farado. Fajardo. Fajardo, thank you. Um, he graduated from Chaminade in 2014 with a bachelor's of, science, of computer science. Um, and that same year he committed to the, the community and currently works in I in IT for the Hawaii State Department of Education. Um, and then finally we have Ani uh, Artera. Mm -hmm. Artera. Um, she graduated in 2014, um, the same year she committed to the Le Marianist community, um, did two years of service in Micronesia, um, and just completed a year with the uh, Marianist Pulse community. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to pick this up and talk into it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, thank you. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all for uh, joining us today. Um, for all of us, many of us, when, before we start something, we like to open up with a prayer. Um, I do want to give a moment of silence. Yesterday in Hawaii, there was a, a pretty tragic fire. It was a four alarm, five alarm? Five alarm. There was a five alarm fire in Hawaii um, in one of the high rise condominiums. Um, three lives are lost, so we just want to offer a moment of silence for them, and then we'll open up with a prayer and then jump right in. Lord of love and mercy, we thank you for gathering us all here today, gathering many of your lay people here. Lord, we ask you to please continue to guide us walk with us on our journey, continue to allowing us to continue to learn and, and prosper um, in many things that we know and many things that we don't know. Lord, we ask you to be with us, be with our friends and our family near and far. Um, we ask you to be with those families who lost their loved ones, um, comfort them and be with them. Um, Lord, continue to watch over us and bless us, comfort those in need and guide us always. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Aloha, everybody. Aloha. So we are the La'akea community, or four of the members of the La'akea <laughs> community. And you guys um, are here for Living Aloha, the Marianist way of life. Um, so you heard our introductions. And so we're going to jump right in. So this is our brief synopsis. Um, it was printed somewhere in one of the materials that was given to us. But I'm going to go ahead and read it for all of us, right? So this is our synopsis of, the, of what we're talking about today. So walking together on our faith journey, we face everyday struggles as anyone would. Through it all, our community has learned to work together utilizing our Marianist family spirit while embracing the difficulties of life. In this, we have adapted to Hawaii's melting pot of cultures and have learned the concept of aloha and its way of life. Living aloha, the Marianist family spirit unites us and our Marianist education guides our knowledge. Our workshop will be structured to exhibit being a young lay Marianist in today's world, maintaining our identity and cultures through life's transitions, and what it means to commit to the Marianist movement and truly what yes means for us. So we've only been around for the past, we're, we're in the middle of our fourth year. Um, many of us are fresh out of college, still fresh out of college. So we're still learning about ourselves, we're still growing, we're learning about all these different cultures around us. And we're trying to tie all of that 
into our faith. So that's the basis of what we're doing. Not that faith, our faith. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. So we want to know, this is a small enough group, and it's, it's the greatest number we could ask for. Um, who are you guys? So tell us your name, where you're from, how you're affiliated with the Marianists, and what do you want to gain from the assembly? We can start over here. All right. I'm, my name is Pat McGillick. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, we are with the St. Mary's High School Lay Marianist community. And what do I want to gain from the assembly? Uh, more dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Which you're very good at. Both of you. My name is Jay McGillick, and I'm also from St. Louis, uh, same community. I'm a retired uh, teacher at St. Mary's High School uh, after 24 years, 44 years altogether teaching for the St. Louis Archdiocese. My very first high school I started at was 1970, was a Marist High School since closed, McBride High School. Um, I uh, hope to really do two things in, in this, at this convention. One, is to uh, enrich and become ever more knowledgeable about the Marianist community that I am a part of and the larger Marianist community that I'm a part of. But the other thing is to take something back to our community to uh, help nourish it and share and uh, kind of encourage uh, our membership to consider coming to the next assembly uh, and to continue to be part of the, the larger uh, the larger community. I'm also a member of the family of uh, Mary Circle in our in our re in our city, our urban area. We have five or six different uh, lay communities in St. Louis, and uh, so all of this is um, is kind of geared towards sharing with with that larger community too. Awesome. Father George. So I'm Father George Sinigliano. I'm the uh, Chap Marianist chaplain that. Uh, Shanghai University. Um, what do I want to gain? I want to. Uh, I, I've been at uh, Shanghai for seven years, but I still think I'm learning about Hawaiian culture and the Hawaiian, the Aloha spirit, as it were. So I'm always anxious to learn more, and I'm sure these young women and men will uh, help me do that. I'm Madison Berg. I'm from Delphos, Ohio, and I just joined Lay Mary. Uh, we're the newest community here at UV, the UKO community. So I'm hoping to gain some knowledge to bring back to our new community and strengthen our journey as we just begin. My name is Carmen from Colegio San Jose in Puerto Rico. We don't have a lay community, but we want to form one. And right now we, we have been one year and a half. Uh, we ten, teach, uh, ten person. Um, we want to come here because we want to learn more about this and share with another lay community that is formed to take um, uh, knowledge and all the resources that we need to inform our lay community. Awesome. Awesome. Hi, I'm Caitlin Bennett. Um, I am from Dayton. I'm a Marianist, a member of the Roots community, and I work at Shanghai Julian High School. Um, what do I want to gain? Um, <laughs> I just want it, everything to go well. It's gone so well. So, yeah. That is going well. Hey. Yes. So, I'm uh, Brother Ed Brink. Uh, I'm the director at Shamla University. <laughs> uh, and I am, um, so from the assembly, I, one of the things is just to learn more about what's happening with Mary and his family. Uh, I try to keep my pulse on it, but since it's a growing uh, and dynamic group of people, it always changes. So it's a good way, the assembly is a good way, I think, to touch base to see what's going on. Uh, um, and then with my role of, as rector, I'm coming to this session not only to be supportive of graduates, of this, but you know, we are starting these communities, and now I, I think it's important that we try to uh, figure out what the next steps of support are. So I thought I might learn something from that. Today. Welcome. <laughs> My name is Kate Schuster. I live here in Dayton. I'm affiliated with the Marianists through one of the UV Play Marianist communities. Um, I came to 
came to the assembly just to learn more and kind of experience the Marianists, not just the Marianists, kind of an easy bubble, but to see what else exists outside. I want to say I'm from New York. I was following out of I'm Jason Bowman. Uh, I went through formation here at UD um, in 2008. Um, my community has dissolved, but I was able to get adopted by uh, my wife's community. Um, so that's been a fun journey. Um, really what I'm looking to, to get out of the assembly is just to learn, learn what other communities are doing well, where our community can improve, and see kind of what the Marianist mission um, as a greater cause, where that's headed. Brother Mark, um, from San Dayton area, um, but now San Antonio, and I'm affiliated with Marianists through Society of Mary, but also um, really Mary's in Jason's community or his wife's community, I guess. Um, he's into. <laughs> and, um, I hope to just gain, you know, a greater sense of connection and um, kind of learning about what the different areas of the Marianist family are doing in their geographic locations. Brother Mark is our um, spiritual companion. Yeah, was there during our formation. Um, our two friends on the back, would you like to introduce yourselves? <laughs> I'm Brian Buckmeyer. I'm from San Antonio. I work at St. Mary's University. Uh, that's kind of my affiliation. I went to St. Mary's and graduated and I started working there as a coordinator for the Marist Leadership Program. Uh, and the assembly, I think generally what I, I hope to get out of it is to take some inspiration back. I, I really love these like spaces where we can talk and have good, honest conversation and be inspired and so to take some of that back and share that energy with San Antonio. My name is Maureen O'Rourke. Uh, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I am a lay Marianist. I'm in the Roots community in the Dayton area. Um, also work for the Society of Mary with the Marianist Pulse program and gaining from the assembly. Um, just a, a good opportunity to be back in relationship with a lot of people know and love from across the country um, coming back for shared mission and being sent forth again. So. Awesome. Jayla, you want to yeah. something <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jayla, Bainey House. I live here in Dayton, um, and I am a member of the Roots Lane Areas community. Um, and what do I hope to gain from the assembly? Um, I think Mo said it very well, just sort of reigniting the passion and, and um, energy I have for sort of the larger various mission outside of just my insular community. So now that you all know, now that we all know who you are, you get to learn about us. So, <laughs> who are we? So, this is the Laakea, Laakea Marianist Lay Community. Laakea means sacred light. So we chose the name Laakea, um, sacred light, because we wanted to be the light for others, attract others, bring others in, uh, you know, attract them to us so we can show them what we're doing, um, you know, showing them Mary's way. So. Also, fun <laughs> fact, we chose Sacred Light because we would always meet at 7 in the blessed a.m. as the sun was coming up. Oh, <laughs> it was coming in. <laughs> but there was always food involved. It was always pretty. Um, yeah. yeah, there was always food involved because that's how he got us there. <laughs> so this top left... Your choice, not mine. <laughs> this top left picture is us at our first, uh, our commitment, our original commitment. Yes. Top right is our first year commitment. In the first recommitment, second recommitment, and then bottom right is our third recommitment. So you can see physically our pictures are getting smaller, like our group seems to be getting smaller, but we're still a solid 11 um, walking together on our journey. These are just the five, that six that were there on island and we did it. We always meet around um, early May because that's when we did our first commitment. So we kind of do, we kind of try to do a annual. annual kind of commitment, so yes. And then this is our commitment statement. Um, we just thought it would be cool if we said it. If you want to say it with mm -hmm. us, you can. Um, so Laakea's commitment statement. We, we the, the humble, humble members, members of the Laakea La community, community, commit to a life guided, life guided by the Marianist charism. charism. As, as God's sacred light shines on us, 
we will share our life with others. Our La'akea commitment of love, service, and community is the foundation of what we will accomplish through our mission. With Mary as our mother, educator, and model, we are called to be missionaries committed to sharing the good news for the transformation of ourselves and the world. So that's our mission statement. Um, obviously, times change, so we alter it as we go. We've only altered it once, but I'm <laughs> open to interpretation as we go on. All right. So going into the history of Hawaii and how Catholics came. Um, oh, sorry. Just hold it. Just yes. like Before Hawaii was a state, it was a monarchy. Um, controversially top or controversial topic it was overthrown we don't need to go into that but during its sovereign years uh, it served as a trading post in the middle of the Pacific for Asia Europe and the Pacific um, so a lot of immigrants came in either to work on plantations or some of them were even slaves there so it's a little sad we have we have some history but um, we still kind of continue that culture of mixing melting pot kind of culture, so we'll get into that in the next slide, but moving on to Catholic. I'll hold it. Yep. So I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. <laughs> <laughs> so in 1819, Royal Governor Boki and his wife Liliha were baptized on a French ship. They are <coughs> the f first two known Hawaiians to be baptized. In 1827, uh, Catholic missionaries arrive in Hawaii. They celebrate their first mass on July 14th. 1827, which was yesterday. <laughs> what was the year again? 1827. And between the years of 1829 and 1839, there was a period of Catholic persecution in the islands. And uh, Catholics weren't the first ones to Hawaii. We had Protestants who, who arrived and influenced the monarchy. <laughs> and during the time of King Commandment III, he issued the Indict of Tolerance that allowed the illegal establishment of Hawaii Catholic Church. Between the years of 1840 and 1843, the now Cathedral Basilica of Our Lady of Peace was built. St. Damien arrived in Hawaii on 1864, and sorry, he was ordained in Hawaii at, at the Cathedral Basilica on 1864, May 21st. In 1883, Saint Mary Ann arrived in Hawaii, celebrated mass with Saint, celebrated mass at the cathedral, and went to Molokai to assist Saint Damien. And then in 1941, the Catholic Church, sorry, the Diocese of Honolulu, was established. Now we're gonna go rewind. <laughs> we're going to the Marianists arriving in Hawaii. So since uh, September 3rd, 1883, eight brothers from Dayton, Ohio arrived in Honolulu Harbor on the SS Mariposa. They had a mass at Cathedral Basilica with St. Damien. They came to Hawaii to work in the school, schools in 18, uh, at the College of Ahu... Ahui Manu. I'm from there, I still can't pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ahui Manu means cluster of birds, or yeah, cluster of birds. They were on 216 acres lands in Kaneohe, given by Commandment III in 1846. The, the school grew, the enrollment grew so big that they had to relocate to town, downtown, next to Washington Place, which is also near Iolani Palace. In the progress of building that building, it caught on fire. So it, caught, it made them re relocate mm -hmm. to a four acre land in Nuanu, Nuanu near Nuanu Stream. It was renamed College of St. Louis. In 1992, Frank Carroll met with W. Bish w. Smith. He's a bishop trustee. He, he was able to convince the bishop of state to give land to the Marianists to establish where, where now is Shamanan University in St. Louis on Kalai Pohaku. Side note, Kalai Pohaku is on a slope, so it's not flat. That's the name of the, the yeah. ridge that Shamanad's on. Yeah. While we were at St. Louis College, we had, we had the 
King Kalakaua was personal relationships with the brothers. They came to many guard reviews and many band re conferences. conferences. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going September 5th, 1883. Three brothers leave for Maui to establish St. St. Anthony's School and Parish. They were invited with an exuberant feast slash luau, <laughs> yeah. which is still there today. This, and then in this, after the war, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor on December 5th, 1941, St. Louis College was turned into a military hospital and command, command post offices. So there's lots of um, stories of like ghosts from the haunted hospital. Chaminade <laughs> has a, a hospital, aka morgue. <laughs> so, well, scary. all of our buildings are haunted. <laughs> <laughs> scary. And then, in 1953, they felt the need for a post-secondary school. 1955, sorry. 1955, there was a felt the need for a post-secondary school, so, which established St. Louis College, St. Louis Junior College. The first president was Father Robert Mackey. It was established by four brothers, Joseph Becker, brother Joseph Becker, brother Henry Homer, J brother John McCuskey, McCuskey. 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 <laughs> and brother Stephen Tudis. In 1957, with the addition of the evening program, it was renamed to Shamlan College. And in 1977, with the addition of the graduate program, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Shamana College was, was sorry, Shamana University of Honolulu was established. I just wanted to point out um, some of the pictures that you see on the slide here. We have the logo of the Sacred Hearts because our saints are from Hawaii. You know, they're, they became saints while they were, because of their mission in Hawaii, um, are from that <coughs> order. And also because they worked uh, collaboratively with the Marianists while they were there. Um, they were also invited, invited, I guess, from by the Sacred Hearts to run one of the schools. So Sister is. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. She's Franciscan. <laughs> oh, I forgot a logo. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she's Franciscan. But she also came with a few of her sisters, six to be exact, to work on Kalopapa, which is where um, Hawaii kind of just sent all those with leprosy to isolation. Oh, isolation. <laughs> Yeah, so, and that's the work that they did out there, which is, um, which brings in a lot of why they became saints. It's their work of mercy and of love that they, have, they distributed out there. So moving on to the concept of aloha. Um, aloha, if you split the word up into two parts in Hawaiian, alo means to share, and ha is the breath of life. So when you're sharing the breath of life, you're becoming one with another person. Um, I can demonstrate what the practice used to look like, or they still do it in some places, but let's do it. So I'm breathing in him, and he's breathing in me, and we are together. Yeah. Also, in a, in a different <laughs> lens, Sharing ha. <laughs> or sense, um, this is Christ is in us, and we are in Christ. Um, when we're sharing that love, that ha, breath of life, that's what you're exchanging. You know, you're not just exchanging it with random people. This is someone, I'm not gonna hurt you. You're not gonna hurt me because I am in you and you are in me. Um, okay, and then we're gonna move on to Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono is um, conflict resolution. So conflict resolution, whenever Hawaiians would have an issue or problems with each other, they would bring it up to the chief um, head of head chief and they would talk about it how nice right <laughs> they would talk about it <clears throat> and they actually listen to all the sides of the story they don't just oh well you know you did this so it's his fault mm -hmm. you know banish him no this was we listen to everybody we pay attention to everybody and then from there they would also talk about the solution now the solution may not always be in your favor but the outcome of this style is a solution to the problem that has happened. Um, 
yeah. And then we'll go on to the salt. Okay, so just so we're clear, salt is on here as a concept of aloha, but it's very figurative. I'm going to tell you why, right? So salt as a preserver or enhancer. And we have in parentheses the word pa'akai. Can you guys say pa'akai for me? Pa'akai. Pa so pa'akai is a legend of how, um, what we used salt for before. Before we had refrigerators, before we had freezers, preservers, salt was our uh, preserver. So I'm going to tell you a Hawaiian legend real quick. I'm going to read it because I didn't memorize it. Um, so this is how the story goes. A young woman was fishing on the western shore of Kauai. The sea had been very generous, but too generous. She caught way more fish than her family could possibly eat in one day. Distressed by the prospect of wasting the sea's gifts, the woman began to weep. The fire goddess Pele heard her cries and took pity. She told the young woman to follow the rainbow from the mountain all the way down to the sea where she would find shallow pools of glistening white crystals. If she rubbed the crystals on the fish, Pele said, her catch would be preserved. And this is how Pele, the fire goddess, taught the ancient Hawaiians how to use sea salt, or pa'akai. Pa'akai actually means to solidify the sea. So pa'akai means to solidify the sea. Um, and so, that legend of pa'akai, right? We use salt as a preserver as, or as an enhancer. Today we use it morely for enhancing, right? Enhancing the flavors in our food. Now, keeping in mind that it's an enhancer and a preserver, we look at math, uh, the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 5, verse 13, where it calls us to be the salt of the earth, right? Knowing that salt is a preserver and enhancer, we are called to be the preservers and enhancers of aloha. We didn't mention it earlier, but does anyone know what aloha means? The most basic definition? Anybody? It says hello and goodbye, but it also means love. But not any kind of love, it's unconditional love. So the love from your mom, love from God, it's unconditional. Um, and so we are called to be salt of the earth. We preserve and enhance aloha, which is the unconditional love. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So we're gonna bounce down here for the melting pot of, melting pot of cultures. We mentioned that Hawaii is a melting pot of cultures. So it might intrigue you that none of us standing up here are actually Hawaiian. So we're telling you all this stuff about Hawaii, and none of us are actually Hawaiian. So Ani is Chamorro. She comes from the island of Guam, way off in the Pacific, close to Philippines and the Japan. Faith is from another Pacific island called American Samoa. I am from a tiny, tiny island close to Guam called Palau. <laughs> I was going to explain more, but <laughs> irrelevant. And Kevin, his family is Filipino and Chinese, but he was born and raised in Hawaii. But none of us actually have Hawaiian blood. None of us are actually Hawaiian. So we're teaching you all this because we've blended together over time to create this melting pot of cultures, of cultures that makes Hawaii today. I'm not saying you're never going to find a Hawaiian. There are Hawaiians, <laughs> just not before you today. OK? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I think that's good, right? Yeah. Any questions on anything we've mentioned so far? OK. If you have questions, write them down. We have a question section. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is our Marianist charism. Um, everyone understands the Marianist charism is what we have. And the Marianist pillars is what makes up our Marianist charism. Um, and so these are the five Marianist pillars. People of faith, followers of Mary, people of community, discipleship of equals, and leaders in mission. So. We range from 21, 21, 22 to about probably 25, 26. So we're still pretty young. We're still learning. We're still growing. So sometimes, and I'm sure you guys do it too, you have to translate things from like everything black and white to how you understand it. So this is the red side. This is the Society of Mary. For us to understand it as young lay Marianists, <laughs> you have the right side. Yes. So it's star by star. So people of faith. We see it as we're sharing beliefs. Um, we're following Mary, we want to say yes. You know, the reason why, if you guys all look around the room, the reason why we're all here is because we share the same faith. We, 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 you know, we have the same beliefs. Um, and then, 
Yeah, so shared beliefs in the sense that we're all Catholic, and that means universal, right? Um, so shared beliefs, like we, it is our priority, it is our mission to live out this gospel that we have been given, that we have professed since baptism. Um, that's why shared beliefs is very important, is that not only are we living it through the Marianist charism, but this is our personal relationship with Jesus, with God, with Mary. Um, so that's what um, shared beliefs really means to us, is that how do we take this gospel truth, the good news, how do we take that shared belief and share it with others? That's how we see what shared um, people of faith means. Um, because we're all, you know, we all believe in the same God. Mm -hmm. So how do we get that out there? You know, because there's not many of us who believe it in the way we do. So how do we expand that out? So that's what we mean by shared beliefs. And moving on to followers okay, so of Mary. Followers of Mary. Um, we understand it as obedience. So we're listening to the call. What does yes mean to us? I'm just going to stand over here with Faith. Um, uh, and Ani. Um, sorry, Kevin. What does the concept of uh, the whole assembly, right, is what yes means to us. And when you say yes, it's not supposed to be just a half-hearted yes. It's supposed to be full heart. You're ready to jump in. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. <laughs> just like he did with Mary. Um, and we see Mary, this is how we discussed it um, when we were doing this. We see Mary as our mother, and we're always taught to obey your mother. So we are going to um, obey and listen to the call that uh, whatever we're being called to, listening to our, what we decided to be named, the sacred light, we're going to obey and, and you know, be the light for others who need it. Who's next? Anna can go next. I'll go quickly because we're sure. running out of time. Yes. So people of community, um, when we translate that over to layman's terms, um, it would be serving for the common good, um, knowing that everyone in our community, well, I guess that would be for the next one too, I'll, I'll mix them, um, would be for the discipleship of equals, no one is higher than the other, mutual mission, we're all serving, serving for the same mission, the same purpose. You want to add? So, leaders in mission, we describe it as servants, servant leaderships, because the way I think our group bonded more is we were all leaders on a retreat, we're all, we've been leaders through campus ministry, me, Martin, and Faith got the Founders Award for leadership. Sorry, Ani. <laughs> Ani was in pulse. <laughs> so, you know, we're used to getting in there. We, like, we don't like to tell people what to do. We like to be with them and collaborating a lot. A lot, a lot of bonding. <laughs> a lot. That's good. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Um, do you need us to clarify anything that we just said? Because I know it was kind of confusing and there was a lot of hopping around. So please feel free to stop us. Like, yeah, we totally understand that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so like I said, the concept of our gathering, of our assembly, is what does yes mean to us? So we kind of just brainstormed a couple words of what yes meant to us. So we thought of commitment, evangelizing, action, um, whole heart, intentionality, being present, trusting. Do you guys have anything else you guys want to add to the list? What does yes mean to you? Just like one word that's not up there? Openness. Open. Being open. Openness, yes. Vulnerability. Vulnerability, oh, that's a really good one. Anyone else? Generosity. Generosity. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Yep, that's where all the adventures happen. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? All right, so what was that? I said listening. Listening, very important, right? So all of the, this is just what we brainstormed, and just like you guys have said as well, that's what yes means to us. Now, yes means a lot of things. That was just the first word that popped into your mind at the time. Every time you think of it, you're probably going to think of something different. Um, and so this is just some things that we thought about when we thought of the question, what does yes mean to us? And we're going to get into a little bit more in the next slide, which is the challenges that young lay Marianists see today. So 
personal challenges and various ministries in our profession, right? It's a very broad statement. So, how many of you guys have friends who are not affiliated with the church? Okay, we all do. <laughs> Father George, you don't? You do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so one of the questions when people ask me, what are you doing in Ohio? I said, I'm going to a lay marriage as assembly. A what? So the question you have to answer is, what is a lay Marianist? So take a second and look around the room. Look at everybody in the room. Make eye contact, make you uncomfortable. <laughs> all right, so we know, everyone in this room knows, we are all lay Marianists. In whatever capacity you serve, if you're a teacher, if you're still in school, if you are doing something completely unrelated to being a lay Marianist, that's fine. How do you take that answer and explain it to someone who has no recollection or no, no background in, in Catholicism. Catholicism alone. Because when you get into Catholicism, then you have to explain what Marianist is. <laughs> you know, there's different levels to it that you have to explain. And it's not, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's definitely something that you have to think about and put it in lay er man's terms. So we're lay, but you know, people who don't understand. I know, that was lame, but... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Was okay, so next, you know, another challenge that we find as young lay Marianists is how do we witness to the Marianist charism? So I know we kind of, we explain to you what we take away, what the charism means to us, but how do we witness to it? You know, like, it's so easy to say, yeah, followers of Mary, people of faith, but what's, where's the action behind it? You know, so... I believe in our community, although we're not um, collectively like working towards this, we are individually doing it. And, you know, and that's something that we are working on. Um, for example, we in our own faith journeys, our individual ones, our personal faith journeys, we each do something that witnesses to the Marianist charism. You know, not necessarily like together. Maybe we have. We'll touch upon it, but. <laughs> um, at the moment, we're kind of like, you know, in the middle, I should say. Um, and we haven't done anything again because we're so busy. And I know that sounds so cliche, but young adults are pretty busy. <laughs> Life happens, right? Um, so the challenge with that is, what do we do? And that's always a question in our meetings. What are we going to do? Um, so some of the things that we have done, um, were family retreats, uh, where we served, uh, I think all of us have served on Tales and Treats. Um, these are programs we can talk about. Martin, do you want to have a go at family retreat? Um, so do you remember the keynote from this morning? That picture, oh, I'm sorry. So that picture that you guys saw, well, I don't know if you saw it, but Faith and I were in that picture. We did prison ministry, um, and it was a family retreat. So we worked with a um, woman straight out of jail, straight out of prison, and challenged youth as well. And so that's where that picture comes from. So we took part in that. Um, it was a very eye-opening experience. It was one of the community services that we wanted to do, that we were asked to do, and we committed to it. Um, and so that was the backstory behind that picture. Um, we've also done, all of us have taken part in a community service project called Tales and Treats. And Tales and Treats, we, um, we work with low-income housing children um, it's called Tales and Treats because tales as in stories because a lot of these students are from the same islands that we're from. And so we want to tell them indigenous tales that come from the islands so they don't lose touch as well. And treats because we feed them lunch. <laughs> um, and we just have a really good time with all that. And we've done, we've done a number and we're always looking for more things to do. Um, I said to a couple other lay Marianists here this weekend um, that being in a lay Marianist group is more than just being with a group of friends. It's actually doing something, bringing change. Um, and that's something to be really proud of. You can have the intention, but the harder part is making action for it because you're so busy. You know, you have a life outside of your job. You have a life outside of lay Marianists. But you got to find the balance to make sure we get it done. Uh, next. One of the other challenges that we have is um, describing the family spirit. So I can speak personally to this because when I was doing my two years of service in um, Micronesia at a Jesuit high school, I knew I was longing for something else, but not really being able to 
identify what that was. And I think when we were putting this presentation together, family spirit, that's what it was. But still not really being able to explain that. So I think that that is a challenge that a lot of us um, struggle to answer, but still knowing what it is and identifying with it. So I think many lay Marianists might struggle with that too. So the big one, how do we live our commitment? So we, we spent a couple weeks, months on the commitment you saw in the beginning. How do we live it every day? We're not together all the time. So how we live in our everyday lives, like with at home, at work, at school, school. <laughs> like, hey, this one's cool. <laughs> like, how do we live it? So it's just step by step. It's not the easiest thing. Sometimes we fall off. Sometimes we're there. It's just how you interpret it, how we interpret it, and how you know how we can enhance it. Because we said at the beginning, we made it. We already made an edit after our first year. And I feel like it's going to grow and grow into something that we can try to live by every day. It's always going to be a learning curve for us. We're always growing and we're always learning. We're not saying we know our commitment and our, our commitment statement and we live it every day, but we do try. And as long as the intention's there and we're trying, we'll get there. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's kind of the end. Do you guys have questions for us? On anything? Anything uh, we need to expand on. If you want clarifications, again, please do ask us. We will try our best. <laughs> what did you guys? Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's your like current community structure like? Like, do you guys have a yearly retreat, or do you meet? Monthly so that's a good question. Very so, good question. Okay. <laughs> so if you remember our community picture, the last picture on the bottom right, there's only six of us in that picture. The rest of us are, we have someone in Portland, we have someone in Seattle, we have someone in California. We here. had Ani here, um, and even us who live on the same island, it gets difficult to try and meet, right? It's a it's a it's a normal thing. Um, so right now our structure right now. If we have a meeting, which we try to, what is it, second Sunday? First. First Sunday of the month. That's why you don't know. <laughs> That's why I don't know. Like, I'm going to put it in my phone after this. Um, the structure of our meetings, you know, we try to do check-ins and discuss what we want to do. Um, and we, we do check-ins about what, where we're at. Where we're at in life and where we're at in our mission, uh, our commitments. Um, and how we can support each other. Um, especially those who are abroad or those who can't make our meeting. So there's a lot of FaceTime calls, a lot of GroupMe. GroupMe is an app that we use that has everybody on the same message. Um, so leading up to the assembly, there's a lot of that. Um, <laughs> we would FaceTime Ani, but again, the time difference. and There's a lot of factors we have to work in to try and be as accommodating as we can, understanding not everyone will make it. Um, and it's funny that you brought up the retreat, because we actually just set our date, which is in October. Um, for our annual retreat, well, our first annual <laughs> retreat, our first <laughs> retreat. Um, and so uh, we're going to start planning it after all this, after we debrief from the assembly, <laughs> and we'll work on it. So wish us luck and keep us in your prayers. Please. Please. Caitlin? Yeah. Oh. I, I, no, I was just making a comment, but I think what, what you said, that the, the last section there, is, is important that it's, it's doing, you know, because sometimes we, I think we can get too caught up in, you know, what are we doing? It's doing and being at the same time, you know. So uh, I, th I think that's important that, that this Marianist charism is a way of, of life that you try to live out. Yeah. You know, in, in whatever you're doing. So, it's, it's, you know, I, I think sometimes down on ourselves that we're not doing something, you know, we don't have a project. <coughs> I mean, I think a project is good and I think service is good, um, but I think there's also this, you know, this is who I am. This is part of my identity now. And just to add on to Father George, all of it, the basis of all of that is love, um, which is the aloha that we are sharing with you. Um, the Marianist charism is all about love. How do we share that love with the world? You know, 
Um, Shamina spoke, his vision was to re-Christianize France, but yet we need to think of that as in now. How do we re-Christianize, you know, where we live? <laughs> because that's an aspect that's you know, just dwindling down and we need to like, bring it back up. Like the bro- <laughs> Sorry, I like to talk with my hands. Well, so. Have you found that when you go out into the community, when you're doing your uh, service. your service with the children, mm-hmm. do you find that you have you ever brought anyone into your group that mm-hmm. has been out there, like parents of these children, or or anything like that? I mean, is, is, do you find that to be a? Uh, so we have not yet. We have not yet. So we're going to discuss it on our retreat, actually. Um, and we've been discussing it along the way. Um, so we've been hearing a lot of stories of other lay marriage groups that have brought people in. You know, they've been married. They've been, you know, they just brought people in. Um, and whatever the circumstance was, that's what it was. And so we need to start having that conversation because we're getting up to that age as well. People are going to start getting married and, and having children. And, you know, we're being very inclusive of everybody. Um, and so... Now, I will say, this is a discussion we have to have because we lucked out, our group lucked out, because all of us were friends before we became a lay Marianist community. And the way that happened was because we would go and hang out in Brother Mark's office when he lived at Shamanad, and um, he approached us and said, hey, you want to have a meeting about this and this? Well, like, what's a lay Marianist? And so he told us, oh, well, you guys do this and this and this. And we are like, kind of all looked at each other and we're like, well, we already do that. So why not? And so we did. I think Jen just, when Brother Mark sent out the request, Jen ran into his office, you're trying to make me to a sister? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah we totally took it, some of us totally took it in the wrong direction, like, oh, you want us to give our, yeah. So it was just. So we um, stayed open, and we did. met at 7 in the morning, <laughs> and here we are today. So we're doing pretty all right. Kayla, I know you're Yeah, I just, a, I just have a thought. Sure. Um, Mark, I like what you said, with the slide about, um, who, what is a lay Marianist, and, and you talked about how young adults, you know, the world, like Brother Ray was talking about, right, is even more secular than, um, is, is becoming sec- more, more and more secular. So when we have friends who aren't a part of the Marianist family, and, you know, for me, I went to Marianist High School University, so it wasn't a difficult thing to explain to people, but, um, but how important it is to try to explain it, right? And I, I think that's a, a really good challenge, I think for young adults too, because being religious, being into your faith may not be cool, or, and I, I like to kind of use it as like, a, hey, I'm cool, and I'm also into my faith. But you know, like I can, um, and then you get into what's an order, like what's a Catholic order, yeah. and you know, what does that mean? I like to use Jamie's analogy of it's like different ice cream flavors. <laughs> We do that too. We yeah, do. yeah. They yeah. always use that. So, um, but I think that that's just a really good reflection as a young adult, especially, right? And how do you, how do you? That's the evangelization. Is how do you bring people in? It doesn't mean that they're gonna become Catholic tomorrow, but having an understanding and an appreciation for for this tradition. So, I, no. it was just a great thought. No, that's exactly, and that's where we wanted to end up with that thought. Because, <laughs> I mean, as soon as you say that. Any kind of faith, if you if you're open with your faith at our age, boom, walls up. Yeah. They don't really want to. Or the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. You know, and then they kind of like stay away from you and like, oh, we can't do this because you're Catholic. Yeah. You know, we don't really want that. So. It just occurs to me as I listen to you talk and you're describing the group that, you know, there's uh, the the visitation community. This this here sometimes we call the state community. Does anybody here from that community? Well, anyway, they started out much as you did so very many years ago, coming out of the University of Dayton. You know, and when you hear them tell their stories, and I've heard them tell it in different venues, they started out as single people, and then they got married, sometimes with each other, and then they had children, and they've been through all these stages. You know, so if you get a chance to hook up with uh, some of them in, in terms of a conversation, you might get some insights into, like, your next five, ten years, what that could look like, and I know one of the strategies that at the time, three, four years ago, we were interested in hearing about was uh, like the whole issue around little children when they come. 
and if I remember correctly, they were meeting in each other's houses and such, and, uh, and usually uh, one of their uh, one of them would, would branch out and be the babysitter for that meeting until some of the children got older, and then when they were 11, 12 years old, well, then those children could be the babysitter. Yeah, so, right. I mean, I just, I put that as a seed to you as you think, because you mentioned it. We don't know what the future is going to bring, and we might be on the cusp of some changes. Well, those folks have been together for 50 years, right. and some of them are virtual, yep. and some of them <laughs> still live in this area, and, and uh, they come together, I, get, I understand, twice a year, twice a year mm -hmm. for a retreat. Um, and gather together if they can, from no, no matter where they are. So that's some I mean, that's a kind of a, an idea since um, they they sort of started out in a sense as an island to themselves, the island of Dayton, and then you know mm -hmm. they grew and grew. Oh, that's awesome. Grew on the physical island. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. That's Thank you for that. Yeah. So I actually went to a session about um, growing Marianist families. Um, some of us were in there. So I intentionally went into that one, not because that I have kids, but because one of our lay community members is engaged and, and she's moving in that direction. So I really wanted to get some insight of how we could move on with her. You know, like you don't want her to be excluded because she has a family or because she's married. You know, so like that's intentionally why I went to <laughs> the different sessions. And I think we all did too. So thank you for that. Thank that you. Was, so if there are other questions, we can link up after this. Um, remember when I told you that we have trivia prizes? <laughs> so now is the trivia part. So if you took notes, which I hope you did, we're going to start asking questions. There are eight questions that we're going to ask you. And we do have prizes from chocolate to coffee to tea to mugs to jelly and jam. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how the first couple questions go, and maybe we'll bring it up. First. All right, Kevin, what is question number one? What year did the Marianist fam Marianist first arrive in Hawaii? Yeah. I think more of Oh. Alright, so you got the first one. Now I'm going to put down the wall. Stand up if you have the answer. Uh, stand up or raise your hand. Okay. Okay. So so stand up. Right. No, no, you're good. Okay. Did you win? I'm giving it to you. One prize per person. Okay, ready for the Sorry. second question? Okay, Caitlin's getting competitive back there. So, stand up if you have the answer, okay? <laughs> Alright, question number two. The eight brothers from Dayton arrive in Honolulu Harbor aboard what ship? Oh, oh no. Oh, uh, <laughs> you have to stand up. Uh, Kayla, you said that. Commit. Very close up. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Nice prizes are jelly. Nice prizes are jelly. We have three flavors to meet, jelly, which means strawberry, what? guava, and Butter mango pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, question number three. What is the meaning of La Akea? The solidification of the ocean. Oh, no! Oh, that was wrong. Good one, though. Good one. Good one. Searching light, there's something light, uh, finding the light. So that first word is key. That first word is, key. First word is so key. Sacred light. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Hey, you guys are in it too, so you can participate. Here you you go. just have to raise your hand. So don't hit the camera. Oh, thanks. <laughs> alright, alright. What's our next prize? Milk, chocolate, toffee, macadamia. Ooh. So if you have a sweet tooth, if you like to munch on at night, these are really good. Question number four. Name one concept of aloha from our presentation. It means love. What kind of love? Uh, love of the mother, love of each other. We'll give it to you. Unconditional love. What's next? Tea. Oh, so we have three different kinds of tea <laughs> yes. here. What are the got, flavors? Um, mango Maui. Passion fruit, Nepali, and pineapple, Waikiki. Oh. All right. I don't know why I'm walking around. <laughs> so question number five, question number five. 
Name the first president of St. Louis College. Stand in hockey or? Oh, you're not. 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 Oh, you are not oh 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 you are not ooh you are not oh 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 you are not ooh you are not oh 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 you